In this video, we're going to look at Amplitude's event data structure at a high level. Our mission here at Amplitude is to help companies build better products. And we do that by providing product analytics to get a deeper understanding of how users behave and what they're doing in your product. Amplitude is event-based, which means that the data we're analyzing consists of actions customers take in the product, what they do. Whenever an instrumented event fires in your product, that data is then sent to the Amplitude platform in the form of events, event properties, and user properties. When we talk about events, we're typically talking about the behavioral actions of users. However, anything that happens in your product can be instrumented as an event. It's important to know which of your users are active in your product. In Amplitude, you will see active events and inactive events. If a user is associated with an active event, that user is considered an active user. By default, all events are active, but you have the ability in your settings page to mark an event as inactive. These events will still be tracked in Amplitude, but they won't be used to contribute to your active user count. Which events you mark as inactive are going to depend on how you want to define an active user of your product. A good rule of thumb is that if the event is something that a user is doing in your product, for example, clicking a registration button, you should keep that as active. However, if an event is something that happens to a user, for example, the server sends a push notification, you probably want to mark that as inactive. Your daily active users count will only be accurate if you set the right events as inactive. If we're talking about a logical series of events a customer might take to complete a journey, we call that an event stream. In this event stream, we see a user beginning by viewing an ad, then they register, load the home page, log in, and finally complete a purchase. Each event type will have some specific attributes or properties that will add context to the event. For example, if the event is clicking on an ad, the campaign ID might be a property. If it's a purchase, maybe the product ID or cart amount might be a property. This event is called play song or video. The extra context we're getting from its properties are that it's a song, not a video, what song it is, and what its genre is. In addition to event data, Amplitude also collects user data. A user is a person performing actions in your product. A user property is an attribute specific to each user in your product that describes the state of the user. For example, here we can see properties relating to where the user is located and what platform they're using. We can also see the number of communities they have joined, how many friends they have invited, how they were referred, and through what advertising campaign. You can also see a random string of numbers called user ID. Identifying users is important, and there are three critical identifiers available for identifying users. Device ID identifies the device the user is on. Amplitude sets this by default, but you can also choose to set your own identifier. User ID is an optional setting to uniquely identify a user. It can never change, so we don't recommend setting it to a username or email, which a user could change. Device ID and user ID are used to help generate the amplitude ID. The amplitude ID is an internal identifier that helps track unique users. Why is this important? Because this is amplitude's way of counting unique users and ensuring your data is as accurate as it can be. Amplitude defines a user as new on the day of their earliest event, which is the first time amplitude sees the user. New users don't have to trigger an active event to be new. In an event segmentation chart, when choosing new users, Amplitude will look for the events fired by new users within the chosen time interval that the user was new. For example, if the interval was set to daily and a user was new on July 17th, only the events that happened on July 17th would appear in the chart, regardless of if the user also fired events the next day on July 18th. If the chart was set to weekly, the user would be considered new for that week. If the chart was set to monthly, the user would be considered new for that month. What event data 
user data, and their properties you have will be unique to your Amplitude instrumentation. The data you instrument will define what questions you can ask. And that is a high-level overview of event data in Amplitude.